let's um, get to our guest today. Um, he's no stranger to pushing himself out of his comfort zone, which we were talking about earlier, from his infamous appearance on Strictly Come Dancing to taking the helm as an anchor now on Good Morning Britain and even performing in a punk rock band. His latest unexpected career move has seen him team up with his former political rival. Here to tell us more, please welcome Ed Balls. <laughs> You haven't had any water slide disasters, have you? <laughs> did you do all that with your kids? Never go down head first. Oh, oh yeah. did you do that? I've done it, and it was, it was rather similar to Ruth's. Um, I, 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 I set off intact <laughs> and um, then had to be reunited with my shorts <laughs> on arrival. And it's oh. just a bit embarrassing because, so... you know, the friction just held back my attire. <laughs> Not pretty. I know. Um, listen, you're here to talk um, about your podcast, which we'll talk to you about in a moment, but sure. we were just talking about, you know, chasing your dreams and yep. pushing yourself. Um, did you always do that in your career? Did you know what you wanted to do? Did you know you wanted to go into politics? Did you push and knock on doors? And... I think um, I always wanted to go um, and to, to be part of the government, to be part of making economic decisions, to work in the Treasury, and then I realised that the right thing to do was to be... Uh, to be elected. And so, yes, that is true. But I think probably more in later life that I've realised that, um, you know, as time passes, you think, seize the moment, take the chance uh, that you've got. And when I was um, the Shadow Chancellor, um, 11 years ago, I started playing the piano um, and I've been doing that diligently ever since. In the last uh, month, um, I've sailed across the English Channel. Have you? With my son, was the skipper. He's a qualified sailor. Now, I've never done that before That's in my scary. life. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, uh, I'm uh, at the moment, learning to conduct. Uh, I'm going to conduct the BBC Singers in a concert in Norwich Cathedral and, uh, and St Martin in the Fields. And I've always wanted to be able to do this, and suddenly I've got the chance to do it. And I think I'm pretty awful at it, but it doesn't <laughs> matter, because I sort of think... Well, you're in <laughs> government, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. During all these things, <laughs> does indicate... We're used to that. <laughs> yeah. It, it does it say to me that you've had a, a more interesting, more varied life, and during this ten years sure. since you ha have left politics, the public's uh, relationship with politicians has gone down the toilet. That is true. I mean, hmm. now politicians, their popularity rating, right across the board, doesn't matter what party, yep. the public don't trust politicians. That is dangerous. Look, there's always been a good part mm. of um, the British view of the world, which is we never allow anybody to become too big for their boots. We've never had, um, you know, big um, dictator figures in our recent history because we always knock people down if they get carried away with themselves. But democracies require people who are willing to go and get elected and mm. to serve in government. Mm. And if you get into a state, and this has been happening... It was happening when I was in politics with the expenses scandal, where, in the end, everybody thinks politicians just out for themselves, they're not decent people, it ends up the next generation of young people are going to go and do different jobs, but they won't yeah. become politicians. And a democracy needs people who are willing to go and get elected. So it worries me that that's the state we're in. And you are right, things have got worse and worse. As for me, I think the truth is that I realised when we went into opposition that I was about to have a midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, in that case, embrace it. Mm. Uh, and I've done a good decade of midlife crisis now, and I'm loving it. Talking about having debate, um, you know, and open conversations, you're now doing a podcast with one of your political rivals. I mean, oh, you were yeah. in the House of Commons debating, not being very nice to each other, George Osborne, who was the then Chancellor, you were Shadow Chancellor. That's true. And now you've teamed up and you're mates. How did that happen? We have teamed up. And look, the thing was, back then, he was a Chancellor, I was Shadow Chancellor. We disagreed on some big things, some really important things, things where I thought he was making decisions which weren't only wrong but were morally wrong. I hated him abolishing building schools for the future, closing down Sure Start, and I would argue with him today he was wrong about that. But I also think that um, in politics you don't have to hate the other side to disagree with them. Mm. And if we get into a world which I think has happened in politics yeah. where you have to sort of not even talk to the other side, you only ever learn by listening and societies move forward where we can find things we can agree on. And I think in this podcast, look, in the last five years, we've done uh, two all-nighters, George Osborne and I. We've done the election night for ITV in 2017 and 2019. Mm. We did a year every Sunday on an Andrew Neil programme, and we found that we could talk about what was going on in politics, 
and we could talk about where we disagree, but also things which we agreed on. And I think that's what the podcast it's is discussion. trying to do. <laughs> it's, yeah. what, yeah, it's, it's what, it's what we do on this show. show. I know. Um, Andy, it's amazing we've been doing it on this show yeah. for how many decades? <laughs> yeah. I know. It's it but it must be... Um, and people it's... disagree with you, Janet, but they still come back. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. it must be... Um, you must love it now, though, that you can kind of combine the two, can't you, without the pressure of actually being in the, you know, forefront of it. You, you've got this podcast, but then you do GMB, you do your other stuff. It's yeah. like... Best of both worlds. And so, now I hear punk rock is on the well, horizon. So, you so see, punk rock is on the horizon. I think that the um, GMB has been like a great honour. Mm. I didn't think it would be for me, and I've absolutely loved it. We were talking yeah. yesterday, Janet's coming on tomorrow. We talk about every issue politics, society, health, people, you know, uh, celebrity, mm. all that kind of stuff. And the subject's changed so much. and. You know, I think people really rely upon the programme, like they do on Loose Women. It's um, where they find stuff out, but also yes, where but they enjoy rock, and change. Yes, that coming in? Yeah, where's your rock? first gig? Come on, yeah, well, yeah. go. What happened was, so uh, about the same time as I was starting this podcast, Political Currency with George Osborne, um, Robert Peston... Good plug. Yeah. Know, well, nice who, done. Who, who I've known for very many uh, years, was also starting a podcast, but he said to me separately, he said, I've always wanted to be the lead singer in a band. And I found two guys who live near me, but we haven't got a drummer. And would you be willing to be the drummer? Now, I've never had a lesson in my life. That's me in the drummer. back there. <laughs> and so we, we played our first gig um, in September at the York Rye Street Party. There we are. Love and um, we do the undertones, uh, the clash. <laughs> I love that. Um, Good we did the now, Sex Ed, Pistols. Robert Pestle singing morning. I Am the Antichrist was quite a surprise. <laughs> You're working on Good Morning Britain on live television. You'll understand when I say yep. we'll have to wind it up here. No. Because I'm getting the I was hard just getting count. Going. You know what it's like. There yeah. is here yeah, going, going. Yeah. right, come on, oh, ten seconds left. Uh, but you understand that now, see? I do. So you know I'm not being rude. I do. Um, so the podcast is called Political Currency. You can get that when you get any of your podcasts released every Thursday with There's George some button Osborne. on your phone. If you press it, you find them. Marvellous what they do now, isn't I know. it? Isn't yeah. it marvellous? Ed Balls, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you.